to be here together. Thankful that he sing that we will have that desire in our heart to be together. So this morning while we're here, we all want to worship him as one. And just touch us and bless us. We're going to read this morning from Psalm 148. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we are grateful and thankful that we can come in your presence, Lord, and that you can come in our hearts and bring us together to worship around your precious word. Lord, lead us and guide us, Lord. We know that you have seen that we would have this desire in our heart to be here today. Lord, and we ask your Holy Spirit to lift us up, Lord, to guide and bless us. Lord, we pray that anything in our hearts and life that shouldn't be God, that you would remove it. Lord, to fill it with your Holy Spirit. Lord, we love you, and we ask you to bless Brother Wade as he prepared to bring the word unto us today, that we will be one with what he teach unto us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Psalm 148. Praise ye the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heaven. Praise him in the heights. Praise him. Praise ye him, sun and moon. Praise him, all the stars of light. Praise him, ye heavens and heavens, and ye waters that be above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded, and they were created. He hath also established them forever and ever. He hath made the decree which shall not. Praise the Lord from the earth, ye dragons and all deeps. Fire and hell, snow and vapors, stormy wind fulfilling his word. Mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars. Beasts and all cattle, creeping things and flying cattle. Kings of the earth and all people. Princes and all judges of the earth. Lord, young men and maidens, old men and children. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for the name alone is excellent, and his glory is above all the earth and heavens. He has also exalted the horns of the people, the praise of the Lord's saints. Even all the children of Israel, a uh, people near unto him, praise ye the Lord. Amen. God bless you. you may be seated. Brother Michael, can you help us this morning? Amen. As Brother Michael's passing by, let's sing this song, Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. Amen. Praise the Lord. What a fellowship, what a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness.
His arms aren't too short. Amen. They're not too long. And they're always right where you need them to be. He's all got everything in control. Amen. Let's all stand. Let's sing this little song. Uh, I know the master of the wind. Amen. Let's sing this. My boat of life sails on a troubled sea. Whenever there's a wind in my sail, but I have a friend who watches over me when the breeze turns into a gale. I know the master of the wind. So can be found. Unexpected storm may drive me from the heights, brings me low, but never brings me down. For I know the master of the way. I know. shine again. Think about that. I know the master of the wind. Sing it to him one more time. Let's talk to him today. I know the master of the wind. Oh, it's good to know that. It's good to know him. You can know a lot of people in your life, but if you know the master of the wind, you don't need to know anybody else. Master of the wind. You know, you can you can um, you can know a lot of people. You can say, I know this one. Boy, people love the name drop. I know this one, I know that one. I, I'm kin to this one, I'm kin to that one. Well, oh, hello somebody. So anyway, uh, but but to know the master of the wind, to know the one that created this whole thing. We know him, and we just don't know him. We know him intimately. Amen. Amen. We know where to find him. We're not looking for him. We know where to find him. This world's looking for peace. We have the Prince of Peace. This world's looking for um, a stability. Oh, my goodness. They ain't going to find it here. But if they'll find it, as, as uh, I was telling Brother Bob, um, that was that today in Bible study in Sunday school class was a masterpiece. That is how you teach Sunday school class. Amen. And the subject he taught, that was wonderful because the kids weren't up here. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. Anyhow, y'all have to explain that, not me. <clears throat> but it's the truth anyhow. 
I mean, listen, if you think fruit is what got us in the shape we're in, you are totally deceived by the devil himself. Amen? Amen. And, and it's hard to talk about some of the things that we do talk about, but it only makes sense. I was talking to uh, uh, a person up in Ohio last weekend, and uh, he's just like, uh, he's like, you know, it's like he's got that deer in the headlights look. And I said, look, let me, let me ask you something. I said, what gives you more problems than anything? Bottom line, what gives you the most problem? It's either a man or a woman. Oh, y'all don't have that problem. Well, I do. And Jim's at home. She's not at home. She's over at her daddy, so I can say this. She's 200 miles away. <clears throat> My greatest problem is me, though, but what is the greatest problem that we have to face is the lust of the flesh. Doesn't matter if you can put A, y, you know, A to Z on it. The lust of the flesh is what the problem is. That's why it started in the Garden of Eden, not lusting after apples, because I ate one last night and I still got my problems. It's on my Weight Watchers program, so I can eat all the apples I want. And it has not turned me into a better person. It may make me skinnier, Brother George. Well, skinny ain't in my vocabulary. But uh, it may make me feel good. But I'll promise you, what happened in the Garden... Ain't going to happen again to a bride of Jesus Christ. And I actually I got that quote here that Brother Bob's going to have to quit preaching my sermons. I'm going to set him down. No, that was truly a masterpiece today. That was absolutely the truth. And um, uh, like I said, I was talking to that brother in Ohio. And he's, not, he's a brother, but he's not a, he's not a, uh, a believer. He, uh, he, we were talking about genealogies and, and all that and and I'm like, dude, uh, they the Bible talks about genealogies, right? I mean, they're so-and-so, but got so-and-so and so. Find me Cain in the lineage of anybody in the Bible. Not there. Because he was not of Adam. He was of the beast. And then you go over there to the book of Jude, it says, it says Enoch being the seventh from Adam. Well, if you go from Enoch and you start backing up seven generations... If you put Cain in there, the Bible's wrong. All right, so Cain was of that wicked one. He was serpent seed, or the seed of the beast. And then he what? He went off and went from the presence of God, and that's what started the ball rolling. All right, so um, let me make a few announcements. Uh, Brother Luis, you'll be preaching Wednesday. Um, remember Brother Joe and uh, Sister Rachel will be coming back from, uh, from Kentucky, and I appreciate they... They did something for us while they were up there. June's always wanted to go visit her stepmom's grave, which is in um, Rochester, Kentucky. And they, uh, the archery shoot was in Owensboro, which is just a few miles uh, above it. So they stopped by and, and, and FaceTimed the grave site for June so she could see it. So I appreciate that. Save me a trip to have to go up there. But just remember them. They're on their way back. Um, I think Sophia won third place. This is a national tournament. Sophia, for, Sophia won third place, and I don't. He didn't know yet. Today he'll know what Jonas um, scored. So there's a lot of people up there, hundreds of people. So we want to keep them in prayer. I think they're going to be with Brother Richard Hyatt this morning. So just um, uh, with a lot of people traveling back and forth. So just remember that. Also remember the 18th will come. Will be the youth service. It'll start at three. And um, Brother Jack Duff will be with us. Uh, he hasn't preached here, I don't think, in forever and ever. And uh, but he's a he's a, a brother that I really appreciate. He's a good, solid brother from from I think he's from West Palm Beach, Florida. So we we're going to have him that Saturday at three o'clock for a youth service. Tell everybody that you know that you got you know youth that have youth services that you that we're having that. Also, he will be here on Sunday the nineteenth for one service. One service only that Sunday. Also remember, on March the 24th, we'll be all going to the, uh, this, those of us that are going, we'll be going to the wedding on Friday. We'll be back. So, on the 26th, on the 26th, on Sunday, Brother Samuel Reyes will be with us. And those of you who remember who he is, they have the church in, in Gainesville, the Hispanic church there. He's going to come and preach for us on that Sunday because we'll all be traveling back. A lot of us are going on Friday because the wedding's Friday. We'll be back on Saturday. But I asked Brother Ress if he would speak for us, and he said, sure. So remember that. Also remember our April meeting will be the 
7th, 8th, and 9th, which will be um, Easter weekend. Brother Dutch Scott will be here on Friday night. Brother Chris Long will be here Saturday and Sunday, in one service on Easter Sunday. So just remember those things in your prayer. Good to have um, Sister Pam and Brother Shane Coffee back with us. Good to have you with us. They're, yeah, they're, uh, they're associated with that Roberts family, so... Bless her heart. <clears throat> They'll be all right. Good to have friends. It's good to have friends. And we appreciate you coming. Just make yourself at home. And uh, you just one of us. You've already been here a time or two before, so we appreciate that. Also, remember all these sick ones. Sister Esther, bless her heart. Um, Smallwood and Brother Donnie called last night and said he was feeling bad, too. Remember Sister Frida and Sister Mary Darty. Brother Darty told me today that... Uh, that Sister Mary was, was not doing well, and he they were heading back home. I told him, I said, you got to sing this afternoon. He said, no, I can't sing, so we'll have to get somebody else to, to do the uh, a special on Sunday after, this afternoon. So we appreciate the Lord. He's been with us. Uh, Brother Darty and Brother Collie has been with us. My goodness, they're older than most things you see in this building. <laughs> Besides Sister, well, Cleta's not here, so. But well, most of these walls are not as old as Brother Collie and Brother Darty. We've redone the walls so many times, but we appreciate them. We appreciate them coming. They're a, they're a, listen, they don't live 15 minutes from here. They live an hour 20, Brother Collie? About an hour and a half. And you're, what, 45 and 44 years old, right? I mean, you, you wish. He said, I wish. No, they're in their 70s. They're heading toward the 80s. Right. That ought to make y'all ashamed of yourself. Some of y'all live 10 miles from here and can't get to church on time. Well, I'm going to say it anyway. I don't care. I'm, I'm tired of hurt, not hurting people's feelings or hurting people's feelings. Listen, we are going to make it, but we're going to make it by the skin of our teeth. We know that. But I had rather you come crawling through there and I see your hand marks and your feet marks coming through that door right there. And say, I made it. I made it to church. God's going to honor that more than you sitting on your rear end at home saying, I got a sniffle. Right. Well, that's the way I'm going to say it anyway. Because that's what it is. You get lazy. Right. Then you come in here and you got your pajamas on and you got your drink beside of you. And... <laughs> you see where we've come to? Is that, what this, is that what this message is all about? Do we have to beg people to come to church? I'm going to read this. We're going to read it here. We're going to talk a little bit about the deep calling to the deep because there's got to be a deep. There's got to be a deep to respond. Amen. If you got a deep, if you got a deep, we got a deep right here. Then there's a deep to respond. It's already there for you. So God bless you. Love you with the love of the Lord. I really do. I want everybody to make it. I pray every day. I want everybody to make it in this, in this whole place. Yes. Brother Aaron. Uh, time, changes time changes next Sunday. Let's see, what does that mean? Some of y'all that are really late will be really early. Or you'll think, or you'll think the rapture's done took place. So, um, praise the Lord anyhow. <clears throat> it's happened before. <laughs> Brother Dale was just preaching away one time. Brother Smarts walked through that door. It was like 11 o'clock. He hadn't changed his clock. And Brother Dale <laughs> looked down and said, well, we, we want to welcome the late Brother Smarts with us today. <clears throat> so, but you know what? With smartphones, that shouldn't happen. Hello, somebody. Oh, electronics, technology, it all changes. All these are electronic. I mean, what? Atomic clocks, they all change for us. So there's no excuse. So at 2 o'clock in the morning, you don't have to get up and change it. It just goes click, and you're one hour different, one way or the other. Spring forward. All right? We'll get some more daylight. So let's read the, the, the Bible. I got you standing so you won't sleep. But we're going to continue on the Son of Man, part 92, but we're going to do like we did Wednesday night. We're going to deviate off just a little bit because I saw something the other day that we really talked about the deep call to the deep that we need to look at. So let's bow our heads. Remember all these that are not here. I know they all want to be here. Sister Johnny wants to be here and all the different ones. They want to be here so bad. And uh, we want to pray that the Lord will grant their desire and grant their wish. Dear Lord, thank you for this day that you give us. We appreciate, Lord, the people, Lord, the congregation, the bride of Jesus Christ, Lord, that comes today, Lord, and has made an effort to get up and put the good clothes on and eat them a meal and drive to church. Father, we pray now that you would 
do one thing, not let it return void. Not let it be just a place to sit and make up time and, and waste time. Lord, this is you. This is eternal. This is salvation. This is redemption. This is all the things that the Bible's told us about. We've come down now to the end time. And Father, let us, as they say in the world, ratchet our game up just a little bit, Lord. Let us sharpen our pencil. As that capstone gets closer and closer, it gets more narrow and more narrow. Lord, I pray that you just bless each one that's sick, the ones that are not with us. Lord, just bless the ones that are in a foreign field, Lord, doing their work, Father. We pray that you would be with the ones, Lord, that are, <clears throat> that are having service. I know Brother um, down in Beaufort, he's having service. Brother Jason Watkins, Brother Donnie's down there preaching. I pray that you'd bless them, Father. Just take care of us and lead us and guide us by your Holy Spirit today, Lord. You come and speak to the people, Father, and move me out of the way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Bible says, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And that Word was made flesh. There was a transition change. The Word was the Theophany God. That was the Creator God. That was the Logos. And that Logos then became flesh. Because as Logos, he couldn't die for us. As Jehovah, he couldn't die for us. But as Jesus Christ that took on human form, he died for us. So he can be our kinfolk. He can be our kinsman redeemer. And then what happens now, he has transferred that. The word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten the Father, full of grace and truth. Now that word is being made flesh where? In you. In me and you. Jesus is not here in flesh. But he has commissioned us to take on him in human flesh. You may be seated in the Lord and his blessing to the reading of the word. Let's read 2 Peter. Uh, and for the ones that have been here, um, we've been talking on the statue of a perfect man. <clears throat> According to 2 Peter 1 verse 5, it says, And besides this, in other words, besides your new birth, Giving all diligence or fervor or, 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 you know, you look at these people on, online and you watch them uh, watch a football game and they, you know, it's, it's two degrees outside and they got no shirt on. And they got their favorite team's name on their shirt, on their chest. That's fervor. That's somebody that don't, I'm not going to say it. Yeah, I am. He's not late for the first quarter. And besides this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, virtue knowledge, knowledge temperance, temperance patience, and to patience godliness. And we'll get to that in just a little bit because be patient with me. And your patience possess ye your souls. In patience possess ye your soul. All right, let's look at the chart just for a second. Now, this chart is a chart that, that the prophet of God told us that this is how the human being, now there is no way that we could take Brother Michael today and saw him in half. It would be ugly and messy. And, but we could turn him out like that and let you look, and they would be rings like a, like a tree. There's not that way. But, but the only way we can show it that we can understand it as a, as a whole is to understand it is that that's the way we look. It's all, it's all so intertwined that you can't, that you don't have the round circles inside your body. Like I said before, you can't, you can't cock yourself open and see a body. No, you see the body. All right, the spirit is talking to you today, but the soul down on the inside, that's the real you. That's the one that's going to do the listening and I hope do the preaching of the word of God today. All right? <clears throat> And there's only two. There's only faith or doubt. There's not the devil and God inside your soul fighting it out back and forth. No. One has won. One has won over the other. All right? One has W-O-N over the other. Because you yield to which one? You either yield to doubt. The reason you yield to doubt is because you don't believe. That's really simple. But there's either faith or doubt. And that's the holy of holies. That's where either God resides or the devil resides. And if you're born of natural lineage like brother bob was talking about natural lineage that's why i said serpent seed in the garden my heavens that tells you right now that you're born in sin bible said born in sin shape of iniquity spouse from your mother's womb kids are liars Amen. sorry kids they all go frowning when you say that well you're denying it now no we all listen how many times how many times your kids lied to you yeah, oh, don't even talk about it. So anyway, so it, does that come from God? Does lying come from God? No, lying comes from the devil. And then all them other things do too. 
But if you get born again in your soul, that's the faith of God has come into you, give you a birth. Not a birth like Brother Bob was talking about. That's why that birth is our problem. Jesus looked at Nicodemus and said, ye must be born again. Amen. And Nicodemus goes to the natural. He said, do I need to go get back in my mother's womb and be reborn? And Jesus said, no, you got to be born from what? Above. Amen. The womb of your mind is now what God's working with. Yes. Everybody with me? Amen. Then the, the spirit realm is imagination, conscious memory, reason, and or reasoning, and affection. Because remember... That's what you've got to contact the spirit realm of you today. You are listening today. You are listening. You are conscious that you're sitting in church, most of you, until a few minutes from now. And then your memory, you're thinking, well, that's what Brother Ram said. That's not what he said. That by, The Bible said this. Your, your memory's going one way or the other, or either you're remembering that you left your dinner at home and you're going to have to go back and get it. You're reasoning, you're reasoning to the Word of God today. You're reasoning whether I'm telling you the truth or not. And then your affection is filial love, not agape love. Because filial love is conditional. Sorry, it is. Agape love is non-conditional. God loved us. He knew what we were going to do, and he still loved us. And I'll tell you one more thing. Remember I said before, if God ever loved you one time, he can't unlove you. That ought to make you happy. That ought to make you know that you're sealed in. If he loved you and he saw that you'd love him back, he never unloved you. The problem is, is we have filial love that looks back and says, oh, I did this. Oh, I did. God must not love me. You can't ever say God must not love me. You're lying. See, there you are. You, lie. you never can say God must not love me anymore. He can't change his mind. You change your mind. But those five senses are the spirit realm, but they have to be manifested by what? This guy. The seeing, the smelling, the hearing, the tasting, and the feeling, and all those. See, taste, feel, smell, and hear. They're to contact the world, but you can be deceived by all that. Right? You can be deceived by all that. <clears throat> I tell you before, you know, you, uh, June uh, makes uh, scented soap. And, you know, you can close your uh, eyes and smell this bar of soap, and you, you would, you would, your senses is telling you that you're smelling a clot of dirt. Because I'm a deer hunter, so she buys this little bottle of stuff. It's not much more bigger than that. And it says dirt. It's liquid. But it smells like dirt. You close your eyes and smell of it, you'd swear somebody had a clot of dirt in their hand. But you open your eyes and there's a bar of soap. So you can be, you, in your sea taste, feel, smell, and hear, you can be deceived. All right? Everybody with me? <clears throat> in your memory, reason, conscious, facts, and imagination, you can be deceived. But I'll promise you one thing. If you've got faith inside your soul, that part of you cannot be deceived. That part of you will tell you I'll crawl to church. That part will tell you I'll get here and I'll pray and I'll, I'll do the things I'm supposed to do. Willingly, not because I have to. I, don't, I have never, since I got born again, come to church because I have to. And I've been saved now 20-something years. Never have I done that. I got to go. No, I got to go. I got to go. Amen. The deep draws me to that. That's right. Amen. My deep didn't draw me to that before. It drew me away. Because there is a deep down inside of you before you get born again. And it's that doubt. That's right. Well, that's an old religion thing. I don't know about that. Well, you're a doubter. You're not a believer. You become an unbeliever. So let's quit from being unbelievers. But now remember... <coughs> Excuse me. The way we see it, the way the Bible teaches us that the soul that sinneth, it shall die. The soul. Right? The soul. The real you, that inner person, if it sins, it dies. If it accepts God and God puts itself in there, burns the old part of you out, seals you in by the Holy Ghost, it cannot fail. Amen. It cannot get lost. Amen. It cannot get unloved. That's right. Because it is love. Amen. Everybody with me? Amen. So there's what we're looking at 
Now, when we come to the stature of a perfect man, though, <clears throat> this guy right here, if he's born again, he has, that is the very soul of God. That's the Genesis 126, man, that God has imparted, and he's the only one that can do it. Amen. He has took a piece of that eternal life and put it in you. As Brother Brown said, we read the quote not too long ago, a little button, a little white button. God puts a little thing inside of you, then what does it do? It has to grow. Amen. And we'll talk about it in just a minute because remember, justification, sanctification, the baptism of the Holy Ghost, and then there's one more part. There's a living part. There's a word that God has to put inside of you. And if it's the word of God, it's a living word of God. Amen. I wish somebody would get happy. My goodness, y'all sit there and look like this right here all you want to. But I'm telling you, they something. But you know why? They something down inside of you that ain't got nothing. Come on. Amen. And that's southern language, but I don't care. Because I promise you, you will have a desire for something. Amen. You'll desire something. I don't care what it is. You're going to desire Something inside your heart. Because you are a human being. And you're built that way. Your free moral agency is going to put you in hell or put you in heaven. One of the two. If you go to hell, you got to walk over me. you got to walk over the Bible. you got to walk over Jesus Christ. Because he's standing to do one thing for you. And that's save your soul. Not just clean you up and make me a good person. And, and no. No, he puts a new person inside there. Now, if, he puts, if he puts a new person inside there, that desire has got to be of God. It can't be of the world anymore. Now, the spirit realm, there's our issue. It can still be of the world. Worldly influences, are they're bombarding us as we speak. Because those... Those inlets are not covered. But by Paul, uh, Peter telling us how to get them covered by not just the new birth, but add to your new birth. That's what Second Peter's telling us. Add to your new birth. What? Get that spirit realm to do what? To yield to that one inside of you. Because like I said before, <clears throat> what did I tell you at the first of the year? Let it out. You're going to one way or the other. You're going to prove who you are. And the further we get or the closer we get to God, you're going to prove who you are. You can't help it. The Bible tells us that even Brother Brown says, <clears throat> the Bible tells us that a sinner can't sit in the congregation of the righteous. There's going to come a time, folks, when it's death to walk through them doors right there. Ananias and Sapphira, Ananias walked in. He said, I've given everything. Peter said, you lied. He said, you didn't lie to me. You lied to the Holy Ghost. And then his wife comes in because she's a co-conspirator. She knew what was going on too. And God didn't spare her just because she's a woman either. They, drug, they took them both out. Everybody with me? I don't know where that came from, but I ain't charging you for that either. <clears throat> so let's look here. <clears throat> pull it back up. Everybody understand, like I said, you can't cut that up. You're a unit. You, if you pull the soul out, you're dead. If you pull the, if you pull the spirit out, you're not a human being. Amen. If you take the flesh off, you definitely are in a mess. Right. Okay, because this is what's holding everything together. Right. All right, so that's what we're looking at today. We're working on that spirit realm. Can't do anything about your body. Listen, we can paint it, prep it, take the wrinkles out. Watch out. <clears throat> Watch out. You don't have any. Brother Darty, you ain't got a wrinkle nowhere. Goodness gracious. Godly jealousy, my brother. Godly jealousy. <clears throat> but you can do all that. You're still dying. Yes, sir. Amen. I don't care. You're still dying. We're all dying. I remember Brother Collie. He used to walk in. We used to go down General Motors. And they had like open house. And we'd go watch. Brother Collie, remember when you on the wheel? You did the, the tire? Yeah. yeah. He'd take a tire. You know how much a tire weighs? He'd basically stick his fingers in the, in the hole of the tire and take two of them and slap them. Try it today. <laughs> Brother Kylie said, I'll pay somebody else to do it. <laughs> but that's what we come to, though, so we can't deny. Let's don't deny that we're getting older. But we can deny that we have to be sick. Yes. Right. Sickness is of the devil, right. not of God. 
Everybody with me? So now look, we're going to add to your new birth or add to what we're looking here. We're adding to that soul of God. You're adding, not him. He is already, he's complete. But we're human. We were born under that, as Bob was talking about, we were born under the, under the um, uh, uh, let me just say, under the sex covenant where we should have been born under the spiritual, spiritual multiplication over here where it says, Genesis 1 says, let us make man in our own image and after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and the fowl of the air and let them multiply and replenish the earth. They weren't, even, they weren't human bodies. So now, though, God has took this that Satan did and that Eve did and she fell by that and the whole human race went downhill. Adam was the one that sold us out, folks, not Eve. Adam was the one that said, I'll accept what she done. But you know what? Christ stood one day and said, I'll accept what they did. Amen. Adam, you can't do anything about it, but I can because I'm God, and I'm going to stand in the gap for him. And that Eve's not going to fall like that Eve did. Oh, praise the Lord. We're going to get into that in just a minute. Let's go to the, look over here. So add to your new birth. So now I'm born again. Boy, I just, you know, um, um, you take somebody, you know, and you, you have a child, and, and Sister Pam, I tell the people, beautiful babies, they're beautiful they they come to the earth you know they, but now i'm going to take that baby and i'm going to go put it in that office shut the door three months later i'm going to come back and it'll be a oh, it'll be dead why because you didn't feed it you didn't nourish it god wants children that he can feed he don't mind feeding you but he don't want you to keep drinking milk all the time he wants you to eat meat every once in a while Eat some vegetables every once in a while. Then what's going to happen? I remember when Michael first started, they started coming to church here. He was, well, you could about get him right here. I can't even get one part of his arm right here now. He's six, what, three? Close to four. What happened? His mama fed him. Well, guess what? I want my daddy to feed me. I want my heavenly father to feed me. I haven't walked this 22 years and just still be a baby. You shouldn't either. If you still have to be told to do stuff, you're a baby. Yeah. Right. Isn't that what a kid is? A kid has to be told what to do. I believe I will, Brother Louise. <clears throat> so my, but now remember, everything's all, well, this message that we're living is, is, is beautiful, right? But remember, we still, according to the prophet, we got out of step. Remember, he had a vision. He had the church come up first or the bride come up first. She was in preview. And now she's, listen, she's, she's safe away in another dimension. All right? Uh, we don't believe it's there in heaven. You know, it's just old mama wife tales that says, I'm, you know, I'm going to walk the streets of gold with Jesus. No, not yet. Because John saw the city coming down in Revelation 22. It's not over there yet in another dimension. Because remember, where's it coming? It's coming here. But we know that by what? There's a message of the hour that God sent us a prophet. And that prophet cleared the way for us to not understand the prophet more. To understand Jesus Christ more. To understand this Bible better than anywhere. I was thinking in there just before I came out. I said, man, what Bob spoke on today, that 30 minutes, 90% of the people, no, 99% of the people in this world do not believe that. Well, that makes Bob wrong then. He just, he, just, he just wrong by the majority. No. God's one, right? He made the world, and he's going to destroy it, and he's still going to be one. So I, you know what? I'll put, my, I'll put mine on him. I'll put my, uh, all my, all my uh, uh, whatever it is, everything I want to talk about and see is, is what he's told us in the Bible. But I want to see it in clarity. I don't want to see it foggy. I don't want to see it where I got to, well, how did that happen? Well, I know how that happened. So you see how privileged people we are to have revelation, and we'll get to that in just a second. We might not get to the, to the virtue, but we've got to cover some things right here. But she'll get out of step with that word if I don't watch. So we were, listen, we were out of step. I, we had another, uh, I said another, there was a, a matriarch in the, um, or a patriarch in the community died, and then we had a matriarch a couple of days ago. She passed away. She taught me in Sunday school in the Baptist church, and she was just a, as far as a nominal Christian, Fanny was, wonderful 
94 years old. Lord let her live a good long life. But she passed away, and I was sitting there talking to uh, one of the, uh, um, I don't know if any of y'all Baptist or not, but it's okay. I asked, I asked Ray, I said, I said, y'all Baptist, and you got Methodist? I said, why don't you go to a Methodist church? Because remember, I asked that young boy that several years ago, uh, Chris Porter. I said, he said, well, we don't believe what they believe. Oh, okay, so you don't go to the Methodist church, you're Baptist, so you, go, you don't go to the Methodist church because you don't believe what they say. I said, you going to go Catholic? No, I ain't going to Catholic church. That's the whore. That's the, you know, that's the mark of the beast. That's blah, 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 blah. I said, well, how are we all getting to heaven? They're going to be like a street down this way for the Pentecostals and a street down this for the Methodists? Come on, somebody. Street down here for the Baptists and the street. Oh, of course, if you're Baptist, your street's wider. And then one for the message. No. That city's four square. That city, listen, that city's got a wall around it. To do what? Keep the people out. Why you got walls in your house? Keep people from seeing what's going on. But in that city, we're going to have transparent wall, trans, transparent wall because we're not going to have anything that we need to keep secret. But God still did build a wall. What does a wall do? It separates. Amen? Amen. You say, oh, no, we all need to be. The... We all going to be one there, I promise you. You won't have no Baptist badge or Pentecostal badge. Or you won't even have a message badge. I'll just be happy to get there. It doesn't matter what kind of badge I wear. Amen? <clears throat> but we're getting out of, we were getting out of step according to this dream and this vision. Brother Brown saw the bride and then he saw the church. In other words, that was, that was messed up in all these doctrines of water baptism and the different things and, and Trinitarian doctrines that there's no such thing in the Bible. And then you got these other things, water baptism, in the name of Father, Son, Holy Ghost. That's exactly what Jesus said, but that ain't what he said. Amen? Amen. He said name. He didn't say names. He said name. Father's not a name. Son's not a name. Holy Ghost is not a name, right? So what is a name? The Lord Jesus Christ, according to what Peter said. If not, Peter and Jesus was... Was one of them was wrong, and they had, you need to tear one of them out of the Bible because they're both in there. All right? <clears throat> so we come through all that. That's why God had to send us a prophet. What? Bring us the entire word of God. He took the loose ends and put them back together. What happened in the man in the denominational world in, in Rome and in all these other places. Then he sent a Luther and a Wesley. We'll read it in just a second. But he said the bride comes back because she's Alpha and Omega. God the great sculptor. Listen, it's all God. If it was up to man, we'd, we'd just be totally, we'd be pitiful. But God's got his hand on this thing. He knows what he's doing. He knows what you'll do with it. That's why he give it to you. Listen, he's not going to give you the Holy Ghost to lose you. Remember, he's not a loser. Satan's a loser. I hope, well, he did hear it. He's sitting here right now already, so... But it's a masterpiece God's building. And he's got a plan and a purpose, as we said before last Wednesday night. A plan is a method of achieving an end. So he is going to have a plan to achieve an end. A detailed formulation of a program of action. You see it right here? This is the plan of God. This is the will of God. This is the only way God will work. It's by the Bible. Thank God he gave us 1,100, not different interpretations. He gave us 1,100 sermons to make it clear what God was telling us. Because remember, why didn't Jesus just stand up and tell them who the story was? Tell them what this was. The Bible said he spoke everything in parables. Why? To hide it. When Moses was writing the, hey, listen, Moses wrote what happened in the garden, right? Moses wrote the first five books of the Bible. Moses was old, but he wasn't that old. But he was sitting there writing, and he saw what went on. God said, hey, hide that. Hide that from the wise and prudent, and we're going to reveal it to babes such as will listen and learn what's going on. Thank God he speaks to us in a mystery that it has to be a revelation for us to see what's going on. Then as we were talking about this, the, the first church was the first church had these virtues working. The middle churches did not, even with uh 
Luther and Wesley. They were still caught up in denominationalism. But for death messengers eat it, which you're talking about there in the restoration of the bride tree, and we see that that happened in Joel. Joel promised, he said, I will restore what these four bugs eat down, the caterpillar, pommel worm, canker worm, and all those different bugs. They eat it down. What? They eat the word down. They didn't eat the word. They eat the effects of the word down. God can't listen. God has, what a gracious God. He does work if you've got a little bit of false doctrine. Because that's grace. But there's come a time when he said, this is it. I'm going to send you a prophet in the end time according to Malachi 4, and he's going to turn our heart, soul, back to those Pentecostal fathers. And then what are we going to do? We're going to take it on to the rapture. Man, if you don't believe this is the end time, you're in bad shape. You've been deceived. Never seen such a Sodom commit condition. My heavens. Good Lord, we got people running the country telling us what our health is as a transvestite. That current administration's filth. Amen. Every one of them's filth. Amen. But for you to purposely put somebody in there to health and human services and he was a she and she was a he, that's what's making our policies now, folks. Amen. Listen, she was an ugly man. She's a real ugly woman now. I'm just going to make black, black, and white, white. I'm telling you. But that's who got put in the position to tell you what to do with your children and your eats and your this and that. You can be a Democrat all you want to. I don't care. But if you can, if you can deal with abortion, then God forgive you. I didn't want, I'm, not, I'm not doing that. I'm gone. I'm done from that. What was the third was Pentecost, the restoration of the gifts, the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost came in 1906, but still they were Trinitarian. Still they had ideas that was contrary to God. But God brought back number four, which is the Word of God. And what has life? The Word of God has life. For messengers of righteousness are going to restore. Listen, we are the recipients of that. Pentecost is not the recipient of that. That's shuck. God enjoyed it when he had it, but he moved on. He moved on to bring a bride into view the second time according to that vision that the prophet of God had. And she even got out of step. She needed a prophet to say, get back in line. I'm telling you today, we got to get back in line before we get out of here. Prophesy, son of man. That's exactly what happened. You heard the son of man ministry when Bob stood right here and said, good morning, people. You heard the ministry of the Son of Man. Praise the Lord. Valley of dry bones, everything got together, but one thing happened. There was no breath. There was no life. Breathe, O breath of God. Breathe what? The breath of God is life. Yes. What? The fourth was the Word itself. I just read you, in the beginning was the what? Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and that Word was made flesh. So the fourth was the Word. Jesus Christ was the living Word, standing in two feet, in a human body, that gave his life for me and you so that he could walk in two feet, in a human body, in a bride. But it took the Word coming back in power. The Word itself is here today. Not just an idea. What Bob preached today is not an idea. It's the whole Bible. (laughs) The Word made flesh. Fruits are the proof of the resurrection sign that Christ has finally, look, Christ has finally. In other words, he's finally got somebody he can work through. 100% work through. Sanctification, been planted, baptism of the Holy Ghost. Organizations died out, and Christ has again centered himself like that cap of the pyramid. First line justification, sanctification, baptism of the Holy Ghost, then the coming of the cap. Who was he? He was the chief cornerstone, but he was the headstone. They couldn't take him as the headstone, so they killed him. 
But he said, I'm coming back as the chief cornerstone. I'm going to start this thing with a bride and a foundation on the day of Pentecost 2,000 years ago. And I'm going to build my church the way I want it built. He couldn't build his church in the Old Testament. He couldn't build his church in the Garden of Eden. He got cut off. And in the Old Testament, the blood of bulls and goats could only cover. Remember what I said to you the other day? Think about it. He's a high priest of what? He didn't say he's a high priest of your faith. You say, oh, i got to have faith. He's the high priest of your confession. And if you confess negative, he has to stand before the Father and do this. Think about that. He can only take a positive confession to God. So who stops us? Take your finger. Don't point it at me. Take your finger and go. Sarah, don't point at your mama. Point right here. We're our biggest enemy. We know that. You don't, somebody don't have to tell you that. We're our worst enemy. But if we will what? Yield ourselves to God. Do the vice of mercy, Brother Brown said. Boy, that's a complete revelation. If you stand, you give money away. What is it? That Holy Ghost bunch. That Holy Ghost bunch. Y'all y'all are now a bunch. That Holy Ghost bunch being honed out so that it can fit with the same kind of ministry he had. Oh, we can't preach like Jesus. We are preaching like Jesus. We heard it through a prophet. Now it's through a fivefold ministry. That's what he said in, the, in Ephesians. He sent apostles, prophets, past, what? To teach what Jesus said. Oh, well, you be happy. It's to us. Sorry about getting excited, but I just, something stirring. Look, because look, it'll catch the whole thing in the rapture. What? The chairs? Your car? The airplane? The drums? You! It'll catch you, the whole thing in the rapture. We're the justified, sanctified, baptism of the Holy Ghost. That pyramid will stand again. I declare to you today, he's standing here today. Oh, I, I believe it, bro. Uh, I believe that. The house of God will live again. It's going to live in a group of people. I promise you that. The tree of life is growing again. We read this Wednesday night. I want to read it one more time. Ezekiel 47, 3, if you'll pay attention. You can take that off if you want to. <clears throat> when the man that had the line in his hand went forth eastward, <clears throat> he measured a 1,000 cubits. And this is Ezekiel. And there's a man helping him. In this vision. Is everybody with me on this? All right. So he brought him up to the waters. Now he didn't just say, now, don't step in there. He took him to the ankles. That's not so bad. You can kick water around with your ankles all you want to. You can stay out of church all you want to. We can get around the ankles. Again, he measured and brought me through the water. What? He brought through what? Up to the knees. In other words, he's stepping out further. He's stepping out further. God's leading him up to the knees. Oh, it's a little harder to walk that way. But oh my, look. He kept going another thousand and got to the loins. Where is the loins? Bob was talking about today. Life. That's where life comes from. What? Justification. Ankles. Sanctification. Knees. Harder to walk. Baptism of the Holy Ghost, life yes. in the loins. But that's not all. He didn't turn him around then and send him back. Ezekiel says, look, in this vision, he says, afterwards he measured another thousand. And it was a river that I couldn't pass over. For the waters was to swim in. Today we're swimming in the Holy Ghost. We're swimming in the Word of God. You can be dead if you want to. God's moving on, folks, I'm telling you. We took a whole year. We're going through all this. We've been going through a lot of things. All of us have been sick, different ones. But I'm telling you, folks, every year that gets closer to the coming of the Lord, we should want more, not less. 
a water that could not be passed over. A water, listen, you can't swim in ankle deep water. Amen. Try it. Remember Brother Branham? He's telling, showing his daddy how he could, in that, uh, he's showing his daddy how he could swim and he jumped in a mud hole. Yeah, and his daddy's laughing at him and said, he ain't swimming, son. But we're in water now that we can swim in. But now watch what happened. God didn't stop right there. He said unto me, son of man, hast thou seen this? Then he brought me and caused me to return to the brink of the river. Justification, sanctification, baptism of the Holy Ghost, the word of God. And then you come right back again and you take a higher form of justification. Higher form of sanctification. Higher form of the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Higher form of the word of God. Listen, God, I, this is his plan. I'm just telling you what his plan is today. All right? If you have a problem with his plan, go talk to him. But I'll tell you, if you hear somebody say, well, I don't know why God wrote it that way. I do. Because it's the only way he saw. Amen. He can't change his mind. We're looking at, we change our minds. Oh, I don't think I'll write it that way. But God's not that way. He wrote it the way he wanted it written. We're supposed to live it the way he wrote it. Amen. Then he brought me and caused me to return back to the brink of the river. Now, when I had returned, behold, the bank of the river, there was very many trees. What's trees? Life. On one side and the other. And he said unto me, these waters issue out toward the east country. Go down into the desert. Go down to the sea. In other words, you're going to have good days and bad days. You're going to have a lot of water one day. You're going to have a lot of desert one day. Which being brought forth into the sea, the waters shall be healed. And it shall come to pass that everything that liveth, which moveth. Some of y'all ought to try that. Moveth. Whithersoever the river shall come, shall what? Live. It's life. Listen, you think, oh, my life is so good. In one instant, your life could change. One instant. I know Sister Ruth being a nurse and Sister Sarah, they've seen life change and things happen just like that. You have an issue and something going on or you be working outside and run a saw across all your fingers and cut every one of them off. That's a life-changing experience just in a split second. Today, you're in a life-changing experience, whether you like it or not. You're either going to leave here worse or you're going to leave here better. That's what the prophet said. See, we, we really, we hone in just like we, we like to, we like our pet quotes that Brother Dale said because you know what? It matches what we want. But you got to take all of it. We got our little quotes that Brother Bradham said. We got our little quotes that this one said. But can we take all of it? Because the Bible tells us we're going to have good days and bad days. The prophet of God said we're going to have good days, bad days. You know why? Because he had them. Oh, he was a prophet. He lived, yeah, he lived just like me and you. He just lived a little closer to God. But folks, let me tell you something. As I said Wednesday night, the sin that we're dealing with, the heartaches we're dealing with, the trials we're dealing with, the sickness we're dealing with, all sin has an expiration date. Praise God. Man, that ought to make you shout. It has a time it will end. This worldly knowledge, this cosmos, all this stuff that we're putting all our faith in. Oh, come on, people. Good grief. You better put your faith in the Word of God that you'll be able to stand one day and say, God, I need for my family to eat. God, I need gas in my tank. God, I need my children saved. The living word comes into us, and it does the same effect on us. What? It tells us the thoughts and intents of the heart. They called Jesus Beelzebub. They called him a devil. He was God. And it wasn't the world. It was the religious people that called him a devil. Living word comes into us and it does the same effect on us. See, same because it's the same word. It's the same thing among us. He, he's, he's bringing it uh, among us. 
And that's the way. And sometimes those who are not in that bracket speak with tongues and another one interprets. What is it? The word made flesh again among us. Let's continue on just for a minute. <clears throat> Prophet God said, we're made partakers of his holiness. We, holiness, we in his image. We are living images of a living God. Amen. I got one amen out of this whole building. People that are alive usually speak. If you're dead, you don't. We're living images of a living God. Dead to self. Raised with him. Listen, I'm going to say this. Oh, I get in trouble. I don't care. I am really, if I'm, up, if I'm to stand in this pulpit, you can't tell me what to say. Either God tells me or I'm in my own self and God's going to correct me. All right? Nobody else will. But I'm telling you something. If we don't get off of our can and start living this word of God, and I mean start worshiping. I mean start raising your hands and lifting. Get away from the world. Get away. There's enough knowledge in this building. There's enough knowledge in the word of God in this building to make the rapture take place. But what are we doing about it? Amen. More is given. More is required. We've had the word of God preached for 50 years here. We have never had to correct error in this church. Coming from Brother Dale. Never. Right? If he had something, he corrected himself. But we had a prophetic gift. We still do. You can listen. But what have we done with it? Can't get to church. Can't get to church on time. Can't live the word of God. Can't read our Bible. Can't do this. Can't do that. I can't do this. I can't do that. I can't do this. I can't do that. Where we come from? We still babies. Brother Dale preached us meat for years. And we're still going. I'm talking about me and everybody. There's enough word in here for us to have power against the devil. Power against sickness. Power against all kinds of principalities and powers. Isn't that what we're fighting? We're not fighting individual people. We were talking about something the other day. You know, the people that come and go. Look at Brother George. He don't care. He's on the front row. Praise God. He was gone. Disappeared. God's still working. Right, Brother George? God's still working. And he told me the other day, just several, a couple weeks ago, he stepped out and he said, I think I kind of know what's going on now. So here he is in church serving God. Some of the other ones have drifted out. We're praying for them to come back in. But now some of y'all are sitting here and you're drifting out and you ain't coming back. This is not for everybody, folks. But you know what? Until I draw my last breath, I'm going to believe you are. Brother Dale never discluded one person. He preached in this pulpit, and he's like Brother Branham. He ne you never knew who he liked. and who he Well, that was the devil is who he don't like, okay? We understood that he didn't like the devil. Amen? I don't like him either. <clears throat> I don't want him to be my best friend. I'll get to something in just a second if you'll bear with me. The word in you making itself real. Real. Glory to God. I know you think I'm a holy roller. I don't care. Triumph over every denomination. Triumph over all paganism. A living God made manifest in the living temple. And the word of God, which is God, is made flesh in you. Amen. Why? You're seated in heavenly places. Yes. When was the time that the sons of God was ever to be manifested outside of this time now? Manifest what? Manifest God, not manifest the devil. A time to deliver all nature. What nature are you worried about? Mine and yours. Amen. This is correcting our false nature. Yes. Amen. If you like yourself today, pray for me. I don't like me. I don't like myself. But we're getting there. Nature, the nature itself is groaning, waiting for the time of manifestation. Who, who's it waiting on? Who's it waiting on? Me and you. 
It's not waiting on for the clouds to come or the earthquakes to happen. No, that's all happening because we're sitting on our can not doing anything. The Spirit of God coming in to look these men so perfectly until their ministry will be so close to Christ that it will join him and his church together. Him and his bride. Yes. Now, we read the sixth seal. That's what we, listen, we got to have a sixth seal sanctification here before they can have one in the earth. And before the two prophets can come, we've got to have all that. We've got to have a total disruption of nature. It's the power of God to interrupt nature. He's doing it right now. He's changing us now. I'm not worried about it out there yet. The sixth seal is completely an interruption of nature, your nature. He said, there's your seal. The prophet's on the other side of the rapture, but we got to have it on this side. We got to have it on this side. We got to see that the seal's open. The seal's open to me and you so that we can live this thing. See what the sixth seal is? It's those two prophets. So if we're going to get anything from God, it's got to come from a prophet. A mouthpiece of God. In other words, somebody that don't have their own ideas. They only move their self out of the way and God uses. You know, many times Brother Brown said, I don't know what I just said. Now, a lot of us do that because we're old. Me included. What did I just say? But he was so moved out of the way. He so gave himself to God. So he just moved out of the way and God spoke everything needed to be spoke. 100% truth every time. Not one time was it wrong. And I'm not talking about, you know what? We could have really, if he was just a flash in the pan and, you know, just a couple of years, you know, he, he had a couple of prayer lines and, and, he, and, he, and he guessed and got it right. No. He had 30 years. 30 years of standing there and said, if God be God, let him come on the scene right now. And thousands of people were healed. Thousands of people give testimony. Not just a few here and there. Thousands of people. He affected this whole world. Seven times he went around the world. So let's read Psalms 42, 7. We'll get to this right here and then we'll quit. <clears throat> Deep calleth unto the deep at the noise of what? Thy water spout. Amen. Not mine. He is. All thy waves and thy billows are gone over me. The prophet God said, now look, when the deep calls to the deep, this is actually comes from the video that we have of him in Washington, D.C. preaching the deep call to the deep. This is in it right here, 1954. When the deep calls to the deep, before there can be a deep call, before God wrote the Bible, he knew what we would need and put it there. It just took man to write it and then God put it together for us. And then man got it all scrupled up. Then it took a prophet to come in the end time to bring all those loose ends together and for us to get in line and start walking again like the bride did in the first church age. <clears throat> Before thing can be called, there has to be a deep to respond. People a few years ago, they probably were sinners. Maybe you were in some formal church that did not believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit, but you heard the message. There was something in there that called out for more of God. You might have been living in a justified state before God, but you wanted the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I knew I needed it. Do you know you need it? Yes, sir. Amen. If not, there's not a deep in there to call out. You might have been living in a justified state before God, but you wanted the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You hungered for it. Now, the very reason that there's a Holy Spirit is because you were hungry for it. You would never hunger for it unless there was something in here to call for it out there. Man's had natural knowledge. Let me cover this real quick. <clears throat> because there's a deep desire for man. You look at that first thing, it says car. Man had a cart. Man had a buggy. Man had a horse-driven carriage. Man had a trolley. Man wanted more. Why? He had a deep. He wanted to go that way. He wanted to go see his neighbors and didn't have to take three days to get there. Right? 
That was his desire. But what has that worldly knowledge done? Natural knowledge. More people. We worry about COVID. Read your statistics. There's more people die in car wrecks than they do of COVID. So let's get rid of the car. Nope. You will not get rid of your car, I promise you. And I promise you if you're an American today, you got two or three. One ain't enough. So see what that worldly knowledge, natural knowledge, is still a deep call. Man looks up in the sky. Way back when, they said, they write the Bible, as Brother Brown said. Then they look at that North Star, and they shoot it, and they're able to sail where they need to go. But man's got a desire, I want to get there faster. I want to know what's on that little ball up there. So what they do? They made a rocket. That fuel that they put in the car, they formulated a little different. They put it in a rocket. Electricity. If Brother Dale was here, he'd tell you, probably some of your older ones remember when there wasn't any. But man had a deep desire to have electricity. And look, even now, we were talking yesterday, June's dad and I, the uh, day before yesterday. You look, look what LED's done to this world. I mean, I'm old enough to remember the old light bulb, and I'm telling you, I'm telling you, if you touched it, you got to burn. All right? Didn't matter if it's 50 watts, 60 watts, or whatever it was. If you, if, you'd be doing this, trying, trying to get that thing off. Right? Because it was hot. Now, LED. Just a little bit of tingle, a little bit of warm. See what man's done? Man said, we don't want that anymore. Because you know what? If we had 100 light bulbs in here of the old type, it'd be hotter in here. So man says, hey, it's hot because of the lights. So we're going to take the lights and we're going to make it different. We're going to make it where we put a little chip in it. Because you know what? We made that chip to go in the computer. Man, deep call to the deep. He needs to develop something. Brother Brown said that's a thirst. Look at gunpowder. Man shot bows and arrows and they couldn't hit anything but about 20 yards. Y'all know what you call an Indian that can't shoot a bow, right? A vegetarian. <laughs> but you had bows shot 20 yards, and, and you'd have to sneak up and get right on him. Man said, I need a desire to get further away from that animal so I can take more game. So the Chinese put sulfur and this all together and gunpowder. Gunpowder now kills more people, according to wars and, and stuff, than anything else does. Besides cars. So the thing that man's making to make us more convenient is killing us. Processed food. Oh, don't go there, Brother Wade. Well, I'm going to anyway. Processed food is what's killing us. Brother Ryan said, what's what killing us? And man is making it. Listen, you can't have roast beef. I was looking the other day. <clears throat> the expiration date is like three months for roast beef. You can keep milk for two and a half weeks now. Lord, when mom would buy it, we'd have to drink it in a week or it'd be gone. I mean, it'd be, um, well, she just used it for buttermilk then because we didn't have a place we'd just go get buttermilk. We didn't have a Walmart. But you see what I mean? Uh, what I mean, even a natural knowledge. Amen. It's a knowledge that God gives man to progress and get better. Look at war. Now you're in electronics. My heavens, electronics. Mm, Richard and them can buy something and what, Rich, one year later, six months. Can I say six months? Is that exaggerated? Six months later, obsolete. Well, where was it? It was laying there the whole time. That's right. What are you saying, Brother Wade? It was laying there in you the whole time. Right. Amen. The knowledge right. that you needed God. Amen. Not a seed, not an eternal life, but a knowledge that you needed God. Just as God give man knowledge to use to make us more convenient. Look at war now. Used to, years ago, when you had the the, the medieval wars and all that, man, it was hand-to-hand -hand combat, right? And then they come up with a crossbow. They could shoot them a little bit further. And then they come up with this. They come up with gunpowder so they could blow you up a little bit further. And then you then you got foot soldiers, and then you got a tank. And Mary's laughing because she knows where I'm going. You don't even have to be in a battlefield. Now you'd be 10 miles away and throw a bomb. You'd be 100 miles away. And then you can have a drone, and you can go anywhere you want to. You can just rain drones down. Why electronics? Man has tried his best to live by that knowledge of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. 
He is only killing himself. But praise God, me and you, we have a heavenly knowledge that's took us away from all that. I don't worry about war. Uh, somebody the other day, this, this gets me. You look at the world, and, you know, you can't even watch a movie now. Somebody says, let's go have a drink. Not us, but the people in the movie. Let's go have a drink. Let's go have a drink. Let's go have a drink. Water's good enough for me. Why do you have to go have, take a drink and talk to somebody? Why? Because Satan has got in man's mind, and that's what he's programming. That we have to do this, that we can do this, that it's okay to do that. It's okay to, to you know, like Bob said, present yourself naked to the world. Men and women. Ugh. Right? But that's what God's put in there. He's put, a, he's, put a, he's put a place that we can have Holy Ghost knowledge or we can have earthly knowledge. And listen, we need some earthly knowledge to survive in this world. Kids, you need earthly knowledge. You need to go to school. You need to learn. You need to do what they tell you to do, the curriculum that they have so that you can survive in this world. But I'll promise you, it will have an end also. The Bible says, ever knowing but not coming to the knowledge of the truth, ever learning. That's what man's done. He's learned this. He's learned that. He's learned all these things. But to have the knowledge of God is the greatest thing we can have. And that knowledge is that knowledge right there, the knowledge that you need God more than you need anything in this world. Anything. And that deep that calls you, there's already something to respond. Let me read you this real quick. Then we'll close. Musicians get ready to come. I was trying to get to this, but I'm going to skip over because I can do that. See how far down it was? I'm, I'm so slow. Goodness gracious. But listen to this right here. This is from the godless evil age. Let's stand our feet. What would God call a people out of this evil age for? His name. The reason it is, is to try her. Yes. Whoa. To try her, his bride. Yes. When she is made manifest, been tried, been proven, proved to Satan, like it was at the beginning, so shall it be at the end. As a seed starts in the ground and comes up through carriers, the life of it, but it ends up the same seed it was when it was put in the ground. Amen. And the same way the seed of deceit fell in the Garden of Eden is the same way it ends up in the last days. Just as the gospel was when it fell in denominations at Nicaea, Rome, it ends up in that same super organization. Just as the seed of the church fell back there with the signs and wonders of the living Christ among it, it ends up the last days under that same ministry, the ministry of Malachi 4, and restores back again the original faith. Listen, we're living under the original faith. We're living under the same faith that Peter had, same faith that Paul had, same faith that James had. Then it ought to have the same effect. Hallelujah. We find out this evil age is what? To prove to Satan she's not like Eve. That she's not that type of a woman. And she will be tried by his word. The bride, as Adam's bride, was tried by the word. Adam's bride believed every bit of it but one thing. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Failed on one promise under the temptation of the enemy face to face. And now the people that's called for his name, of course, is his bride. She is to come in contact again by the same thing, not by just denominational truth or something, but every W-O-R-D. Listen, I put that right there. How many of you can say God's proud of you? Because you know, Job sitting down there one day, minding his own business. He had all of his cows in one lot. He had his camels. He had his kids safe in the house. He had a nice wife. He had all the food he needed. He owned everything that he needed to sustain himself. And he's just sitting there <clears throat> oblivious to what's fixing to happen. But God's standing in heaven. Oh, he said, oh, devil, come here for a second. Have you considered my servant Job? He said, you've got a hedge built around him. I can't get to him. I've tried. 
He's down there all comfortable. He's got the word wrapped around him. He's got everything he needs. He's not, he's not a want of anything. So he says, you just let me at him. But you know what? God's standing there, and he's not smiling on the outside because he's holding. He's smiling on the inside. Because remember, he knows the end from the beginning. He knows the end from the beginning. He was proud of Job before this ever happened. So he doesn't let you say, well, no, God's not proud of me because of, well, Look at Job. After that, what happened to him? Everybody, all of his friends, all of his neighbors, and even his wife said, you've done something. Right? You've done something. You're a secret sinner. You're holding something back. No, it wasn't. It's just that God wanted to prove that Job was his. And that he was proud. Listen, if he's not proud of you, that's why I was telling about we look at sickness and all these different things as God beating you up. Now, what about a testimony service? Amen. What about God letting your children go through what they went through? They wouldn't have been a testimony. They wouldn't have been a, a, a video up here of Iva June and different ones. There wouldn't be Frida sitting there with stage four, still living, still breathing, still worshiping God. Because God's proud of you. doesn't matter what the situation is. I want him to be proud of me. Have you considered my servant, Job? Have you considered what we're going through in your life today and my life today? Have you considered that that is a testimony waiting to happen? And let me tell you something. Your daddy's already testified. Your daddy's already wrote it in the Bible. By his stripes, you're healed. I'll save your soul if you'll ask me. I died for you. So he already knows. He's proud of us before it even gets started. But you and I have to go through that test so that God can say, man, look, devil, you didn't make him do what you said. Because remember, Satan said, I'll make him curse you and die. And then his wife even said that. And Job never did. Job came out on the other side, and God said, that's my boy. He was my boy to start with. He's my boy now because I am proud of him. Let's sing a song. Let's sing, uh, draw me near. <clears throat> if you have a need. I am thy Lord. I have heard thy voice, and it shall thy the test. Bleeding. So you know we'd be a bunch of small rats if God just let him get out of the living. But he whipped us with nail scarred hands. Shows us where we're wrong. And then we turn that down. Look up with a steadfast hope and my will be lost in my should be your prayer. Not my will, but thy will be done. Nearer blessed Lord to the cross where thou hast died. Oh, draw me nearer. Nearer blessed Lord to thy precious bleeding side. Sing his last verse. Oh, the pure delight of a single hour that before thy throne I spring when I kneel in prayer and with thee my God I commune
Lord, to 